Welcome to my channel. All right, just a warning for this video. Not that it's really a warning warning. Um, there was a bit of a stuff up with my video. My poor little computer's brains were way too busy when I was recording initially. And it did the audio, but couldn't do the visual. So what I have done is I've done a second section and recorded that. So you're missing the section to the left when you do get to see the video and um, it also I think ran out of memory at the end so it stops at 45 minutes and I kept talking for another half an hour so what I'm going to try and do if I can with my strange brain is um, kind of over record that bit that I was chatting about. What I was chatting about was um, YouTube kind of tips for newbies um, and things like that. So uh, grab your work and I will throw you into the beginning and then I will catch you at the end and kind of finish it off I suppose and hope hopefully it makes sense um, and we'll try and give you a bit of a whip and chat. So Grab your cuppers and dig in. I am working on uh, Victoria's Moon. This is one of the squares. Uh, I think I've got a round and I've got a square by them. I'm working on the square. would like to get this black stallion done. It's not going anywhere fast. Um, but hey, it is what it is. So, um, grab your work. Grab a cuppa and... Um, Let's see where we go. Um, all right, life update, I suppose. Um, where are we at? <laughs> it feels like I've only just done a whip and chat with you, to be honest. Um, and I think that the last week has actually flown, and I'm kind of going, where did the last week just go? It just blinked and I missed it. Um, Work was two afternoons um, last week, and thankfully they were reasonably quiet shifts. Um, and there were some preventative measures put in place, and it was pretty smooth. So that was good. Uh, it was a little bit um, nerve-wracking dealing with people who were believed to be sick. Um, and yeah, it was just a case of putting measures into place. One of the people that I work with um, had the um, hand sanitizer flowing, wearing gloves if he was handed anything and that kind of thing because he's got a very ill dad who is not a young man so he's trying to do absolutely everything to protect his dad so that's where he's coming from in his mentality of hygiene and health and safety so it's a little bit um thought-provoking i suppose seeing different degrees of social distancing and um everything else um i went out yesterday it's the Easter weekend here at the moment, but I went out yesterday to go and get some craft supplies. Um, and when I was out, I took note of the lack of traffic on one of the busiest roads that we have. Um, so yeah, that again, that was as confronting. It was almost like uh, I was working a weekend shift in the middle of the night kind of thing. It was you know there was nobody parked which it's always jam-packed on a Saturday because we normally have the market down there um, you can't get a park for love nor money um, there was no traffic on the road or very little traffic on the road by comparison um, you know places are shut left right and centre I finished in the cross stitch shop and I went to go and get some Korean chicken and it was closed against its usual hours. They do deliveries in the evening, but we have pizza organized in the evening. So it was just after 
you know, a quick kind of lunch stop. I love crispy chicken wings. Um, so I was just after some chicken wings, but yeah, all closed. So things are changing, businesses have changed, practices. And there was a guy standing in the shop with a face mask on. Um, no staff or anything, it was closed. He was just on his phone with a face mask on. And I was like, mm, okay. Um, so yeah, little things like that are quite um, confronting. It's uh, The message going out this Easter is stay at home. Um, do not go to your shack, which is what they call your holiday home here in Tasmania. Um, if you try and go to your shack, you will be stopped by the police. Um, apparently the police have been out in force with the chopper. The chopper has gone up the Midland, all along the top coast and down the east coast. And what it's either doing is using its heat sensing um, tools to detect where people are and then it's um, either telling police or it's landing itself because there was a photo on Facebook of the chopper landed next to a beach and um, so the chopper was in the foreground here there was a tent and a car here and then the shore was along this bit so this guy may have thought oh, I'm hiding and I'll be fine and the chopper located landed and told them to get the fuck out of there because the um the um i was going to say prime minister he's not the prime minister the uh, premier of tasmania is very much stay at home save lives that's the slogan uh, the slogan and he's saying we are fortress tasmania and look i understand these guys are probably thinking, uh, you know, I'm just going to camp. I'm on my own. Where's the harm? But the whole point is get off the roads. Don't be out if you don't need to. And I know it might seem a bit kind of ironic that I went out and I got craft supplies. Um, but at the moment, businesses are still, still open. open. I, don't I don't know how long they're going to be open for. for. And it means that I'm supporting a local business and getting my craft supplies so that if it does shut down, I've got stuff to do. Not that I don't have enough stuff to do, but I've got a mix now of stuff to do. Because I'm sure if I ran out of diamond paintings and wool and everything else, my husband would be kind of going, yeah, I have stuff that you can do as well. So yeah, it's, it's not like I'm starving for stuff. We have a million projects and we have a weekend time now that we, spend together in couples therapy <laughs> as we you know as i nicknamed it and uh, he calls it team building i call it couples therapy anyway he was up the top of the fridge yesterday putting up strip lights in the kitchen in you know that kind of wall that nobody ever actually uses just to give some filling light and then he was down the hall and he was threading up the lights and you know there's ladders everywhere and it was all a bit mental but i was standing at the bottom of the ladder then watching sophie climbing up and down the ladder and she's mastered the ladder pretty well although she did come a cropper yesterday i went to the toilet and i heard her screaming as she had i don't know either taken the step wrong and tumbled or whatever but um watching her learning to go up and down was quite interesting because she was up and down next to the fridge which meant that she was at the fridge magnets which were all out of her reach previously so she's got into the fridge magnets that are those um stupid weak uh you know free stickers that you get you know the free magnets that you get on the sheets magnet sheets they're you know they wouldn't stick to anything really but she's got a hold of a couple of those and she's been taking them on and putting them off and having a ball with those so yeah each did their own um so she's been playing with that um and learning how to go up and down the ladder and yeah it was all kinds of cute so i was kind of watching her handing husband clips and nails and feeling like a spare part and um you know oh my husband thinks i was staring at his ass no i wasn't staring at your ass yesterday yeah i was trying actually not to look up too much i'm kind of going yeah, my lower back is getting a bit sore and yeah making sure i had pain meds on board and not doing anything stupid with the back um my workers 
comp thing for my upper back um, is being challenged as not being work related. So this weekend I have four days off. Today is Sunday and my upper back is not feeling that bad because I haven't been at my computer. So now I've got to challenge it from a legal point of view and I haven't been at work for the couple of days. Computer at work. Computer at work. And I've had two very busy days with light computer work on Thursday and Friday, or Wednesday and Thursday. So I've now got to go down the legal route if there's anything I actually want to get further out of the workers' comp because I spoke with my GP and he said, look, if the workers' comp thing doesn't work out, we'll still get you better. And you know, here's some things that you can do to help. And I've got to see my um, GP that was doing the workers' comp claim with me and go through the claim with him. The report, the, you know, the doctor who tries to negate the company actually being responsible for you um, for causing the injury. Um, yeah, so I've got to go through that report with him and then I've got to go down the legal route. Well, I haven't taken any time off with this bloody back pain. And there's been some days when I'm crying in pain. And last week, um, being not these last five days, but the week before that, I actually left work early on two of the days because I was getting so bloody sore. So um, I probably would be well justified to have taken time off, but I haven't. So I'm not actually getting workers comp paying me instead of my normal pay. Um, they have paid for my MRI, they have paid for my physio, um, but they haven't actually been, uh, you know, hugely out of pocket in other respects. I don't have to have surgery or anything like that and all that. So, yeah, but the, um, the medico who, you know, looked at me, listened to my work history, which I'm not entirely sure how relevant that is anyway, but they ask these questions um, you know and then she watched me move a bit which my movement hasn't been an issue it's the pain when I don't move that seems to be the issue so yeah um, interesting theories when they kind of want to not be found liable so she basically said I needed stress management and needed to do vigorous exercise and I thought you sanctimonious bitch um, I mean, okay, I don't exactly have a lifestyle where I'm out running or anything else, but it was, you know, she thinks it was just from stress and she thinks it was, you know, I'll be able to sit in a psychologist's chair and it's going to get rid of my back pain. Mm, don't think so, chicken. But anyway, that's what she's kind of paid for to... Um, tell the company that they've got a loophole that they can get out of, I suppose, or the insurance more to the point of the company. So yeah, um, as usual, a bit disillusioned with um, workers' comp. Uh, yeah, if it's an, you know, a gimme, like you break your leg at work, that kind of thing, yeah, it seems to be, yes, it was our fault kind of thing, but um, all I wanted was the pain to go. All I want, I suppose, at this stage is for a sit-stand desk giving me the variety. Oh, God. Um, if I can remember, all right, 10, 12 minutes in. If I can remember, I will show you a picture of what I took. This is my jury-rigged sit-stand desk. I've got two photocopy uh, boxes, reams of paper. There's nothing in them. They're just empty boxes. And a couple of clips. And I've clipped the two boxes together. So it's raised my keyboard. The height of a box of paper. So what's that? You know, 30 centimetres, give or take. It's raised it by that. I've put the two together so I can put the keyboard and the mouse in the same kind of, you know, plane. I've got um, a file paper sorter, you know, where you've got six trays of miscellaneous paper. I've got one of those so I've put my screen up on top of that and I've lifted everything 30 centimeters. Now it's no good for me when I'm actually sitting although I can sit and yeah I shouldn't be looking up like that but I am. 
Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's very much a bodge job, but I'm kind of thinking, well, you know what, if you're not going to bloody well help me, and the delay is, like, the desk was supposed to be delivered Friday week ago, and it wasn't, um, and then I was worried that if my claim is disputed that I wouldn't get my desk and they'd go stuff you, you're not getting it. There are a couple of desks in the office, but the actual, the people who have them use them. And because we're a kind of sedentary office environment, my OT is saying we should all have sit-stand desks as, you know, par for the course. And, you know, no more of this bullshit of being refused. So anyway, I was trying to get this, I don't know, thousand dollar plus desk of workers comp and they're probably going hell no but I was told that I that probably wouldn't be an issue in going ahead so we'll wait and see it's been ordered for weeks and weeks and weeks while the claim was in situ so my OT thinks it should go through but we'll see so I've got to speak to my union people and get the legal eagle involved and see if I've got a leg to stand on. Um, I've, I've also got, got what's called, I think it's called, called a cute, cute mouse. mouse, it's a vertical mouse, I haven't used, used vertical mouse, mouse before. This, this mouse I love, this is my Logitech mouse, it's got a, it's got a wheel that you can just spin and it keeps going. That would be great for work. Um, at the moment I use a silent mouse. Um, and it's got no, it doesn't make a click when it is pressed. Um, so that's kind of cool. It means that I'm not, you know, clicking around in um, in quiet environment with the mouse, click, 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 you know, scrolling through stuff. But I, it doesn't have a fast scroll, so I miss the fast scroll and it work. But anyway, uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, having, having a, a bank, bank holiday long weekend, weekend is nice. The weather is getting kind of wintry. It was raining yesterday morning and it's getting cold. I'm sitting here and actually starting to feel chill. Um, we have the shade cloths my husband installed, I think, the last weekend we were doing our team building and a couple's therapy. Um, so, yeah, we've got shade cells now up on the deck. Uh, now I just need furniture to sit in. Or on even. It, it was, was so windy, windy yesterday that one of the wooden benches blew over, and I was quite impressed. There, there isn't much weight in this thing; it was cheap. Um, I would like to get some nice furniture that I can sit out on. We have a lovely view if you overlook the houses um, and kind of look up. You, we have the view of the water, and then um, headland, not headland. Um, hillside behind us so it's really quite pretty um the sun in tasmania bites so i can't sit out for long in the summer and it gets quite warm so the shade sail will be really nice sophie is definitely going to need it because she's fair blonde um and she would burn to a crisp because we have no ozone layer down here in tasmania um so that's kind of where um, the outside is going. Um, we did give the step kid a task of building one of the seats. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was told not to put the screws in hard and we're lucky the screws are in anything if she's put screws in. There's a lot of screws that are not in anything. Um, and it's wonky and yeah, I think she put in four screws and that's about it. So that needs to be fixed but it's the same kind of seat as we have the blue over um so i'm not sure what we're going to do from a point of view of weighing it down or stopping it from blowing around the deck my husband does want to put feet on it that's i think one of the modifications he wants to do yeah we might have to put lead into the feet no oh what i'm, I'm I tell you what, you know how, if you've ever watched Mrs. Coffee, she talks about uh, double-sided adhesive and how she doesn't like it. I'm with her. 
Um, if this was Diamond Art Club, I'd be able to shove these around with eh, reasonable ease, maybe even relative ease. These, not so much. You've got to put them in the right place. They will shove a bit, but it can be hard work like that. And I'm worried about breaking my tip. And look, it's not like I don't have plenty of tips, but it's not the point. I am I don't want to be breaking my equipment. Um This isn't really the drills are not fantastic. They're not hideous from Victoria Moon. Um but I was gonna say, hang on, they're a uh, nine and a thirteen. So I've got the diamond tops and I've got square tops, so they're nine and thirteens. They are not the twenty threes that Diamond Art Club have. Let me just look at theirs if I can get the sun on the right. Are they 23? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. No, they're the same. They're nine, I think. But there is something about them using 23s as well. Um, the, the different number of facets which give the sparkles. These drills have kind of little dinks in one of the straight edges. So they will probably pop. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, I really do want to get this finished. Uh, the one thing I'm glad about with this kit is it's come in the Ziploc bags. If you've seen me do it just off to the side. Um, the beauty with the Ziploc bags is it's kind of it's kitted up or down or whatever you want to call it. And um, you can pick it up and you can just do it quite easily. If I wanted to kit up a Diamond Art Club, for instance, I would need containers and bags and all of that kind of thing to be able to do it. I do actually have a new storage bag over behind my screen that I want to unbox. Um, I get my storage bags from um, Logan store on AliExpress. It's the it's a fairly reliable store. I like Logan. Um, it's not necessarily the cheapest, but I'm pretty much guaranteed that I'm going to get the right size bottles. A lot of the other ones are kind of misleading as to the size bottles you get. I get the five centimeter sizes. It's a good middle ground. There are gold tops and silver tops that you can get that have the different um, heights. So um, if you're interested in those storage containers, um, go check out Logan store. If I can remember, I will put the link in. Whipping chats are a little bit tricky for links. If you look, if you go into my accessories playlist, you will see the storage bag. It's the one with the coloured um, edging on it. You'll see the storage bags in the playlist there and you can just click on the link or you can watch the video to see what I'm talking about with the storage solution. They take um, one of the big bags of drills, so a thousand um, drills, no problem. Um, so they're good for packing the bigger kits into. You get 60 bottles and um, that usually covers most of the big kits as well. And the only thing it may not cover would be a royal diamond painting kit, which can have a ridiculous amount of colours. So you might need to supplement your kit if you have over 60 drills um, or over 60 colours. But yeah, definitely recommend those kits. They're really, really cool. You can um, put your numbers in in the correct order for your kit. Uh, put the stickers on the top and you're good to go. 
husband is killing the flies. Um, if you can hear the spray in the background. Uh, I'm to make sure I've got all these. I'm working upside down, so um, I haven't turned the bag around. This isn't a kit that has arrows going different directions. There is only one arrow that goes in any direction. And I don't know if I grabbed the bag out of the kit, the box. Um, no, I will show you. For repurposing, this is the box that I bought my microphone in. Just a cardboard box. And I've repurposed this. I've put in the index cards to divide and every five bags get split so I can kind of you know grab reasonably easy one to five I've got labels on each of the bags I hand drew the symbol sorry I'll show you it's just off camera I hand drew the symbol that I'm looking for on, on the bags. bags I also have the sticker sheet but because it's on the bags and there's already labels on the bags I actually don't need the um Zyron sticker maker label so that was Handy. Um, yeah, so that's kind of around up to with labels and bags. Um, what else is going on? Um, 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 what else is going on? I have been working on my black work, my peppermint purple black work. If I remember, at 25 minutes to show you where I'm up to and insert a picture, I will, here. Uh, loving it, absolutely loving it. Loving having the couch project. Uh, loving how reasonably quick they come up together. Um, I have had to frog a couple of things that would be to rip back. Uh, where are you? There's, there's a bunch, okay. Um, have had to rip back just a bit when I've missed a point, but um, it's been funny because my stepdaughter has asked what I'm doing, and I've shown her the black work and you know said that she could do that too, um, and said so, you know it's kind of like doing math, you know, with geometry and lines and all of that kind of thing because she said how do you know which way to go and I said well you're following straight lines so you're basically looking at this line here or you know and you're threading along the, the lines so I said I may give her a kit um, or a pattern or something I don't know she's got into the diamond painting she um, unfortunately wasn't here when Sophie got into her down painting into her drills and Sophie scattered the drills all over the floor so I had to pick all those up and now she's got to sort them and she's you know the I don't want to sort them kind of belligerent behavior and I said well you're gonna to have to put the work in to be able to enjoy doing it again so do it in little bites and you'll get there so I reckon she's got two or three sessions left to sort her drills hopefully there isn't too much of an issue with the colors and they're not too similar uh, so she can do that with reasonable ease but um yeah she would think that she should just get to I don't know be the baby rather than you know, do a hard job and do it well. But that's okay. Or put the work in and then reap the reward when the hard work is done. Which, look, who doesn't actually want to do that? Like, cunning cross stitch, my Harry Potter stitch along. I'm kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to have to um, grid some of my fabric. I'm kind of going, but greeting's not actual cross stitching and you know, I don't want to have to put the prep work in, but if I don't put the prep work in, I'm not going to be able to have the fun of doing the bloody project. So 
it's just as pertinent for adults as it is for kids to put the prep work in to be able to enjoy you know the final outcome it's like putting prep work into painting you have to sand it back properly to be able to put the paint and coat on in order to not have the paint peeling you know two weeks later you know I, but it's such a drag having to do the prep work um so yeah we'll get there I need to pick up that little bugger who went running away. I'll get up. Um, with the black work that I'm doing, I've got addicted to other projects. Oh, I've gone on list. Um, so yeah, I've got the, um, worker bee project. I've gone and downloaded that. Um, it's basically, it's a bunch of hexagons with the different black work pattern in each of the hexagons. And then there's some bees, um, just floating around in random kind of spots. Now, do you think I can put this one away? Am I done? All right. Um, so yeah, loving that one. And there is a second stitch along that I've joined that Claire has done, which is the Botanics series. Now the Botanics does, they don't give, or at least if they do give, I missed it. The full range of colors in the beginning of the project which means that I may not have the specific color so I may go a bit off grid with this and um, yeah I'll see how I go but I bought a whole load of Ada I've got to work out what project I'm doing with them and then I've got to label the damn thing otherwise I'm going to forget what it is that I've bought or why I've bought it. Now I've got one. I've just spotted another one. Jeez Louise. Just when I thought, I've looked, I've looked. No, can't see them. There's probably three or four more of those ones. Um, this has only 20 colours in it. I'm really, really hoping it comes out okay. I hope the subtle greys work. Oh, there's even more than I thought that I missed. God. There's another one. This is completely mental. And now I've lost where it was. Triangle, come on, jump out at me. There was one. There was one. I know, I saw it. There it is. And there's one, two, three, four. It's handy when you shake out exactly what you need. Yeah. I think it's only happened to me once. No, you go there. I know, talking to the drills. Who doesn't do that? Sign of insanity. I think it's expecting them to answer you back is the problem. I haven't forgotten about doing um, this focused live of um, uh, COVID clampdown. Um, maybe that's what I'll call it. 
Um, I would like maybe to have some other people's interactions. I'm not a psychologist. Um, it could be that it brings up issues and I don't know if I should have a psychologist at hand or if I should just say, look, if you really are struggling, you need to phone a friend, you need to phone somebody, Lifeline, whoever. So I don't know if it's something that I will involve um, somebody like um, Jen, who is a counsellor, but she may, I don't want to flood her, but I want to maybe have somebody who knows the resources. Um, and we can put links in then. Um, it might be good to have somebody just to have the back and forth chit chat. Um, or to be able to invite people into the stream. That's kind of where my head's kind of thinking. And that would be for potentially next weekend. Um, and we'll see how we go. Ooh, I heard a whimper. Hello, Sophie. Ooh, and a sniff. Um, so that's still stewing, I guess, for want of a better... That's how my ideas kind of percolate. Um, And then it kind of comes together in the end and it's, you know, it just, it's a bit of time and it's a bit of... Hey. Hello. No. No. Go and ask Daddy for an apple. You gonna have an apple? Or a pear? Looking forward to the short week in work. Four days will be awesome. Um, next week, uh, I have a phone appointment with my GP. Second phone appointment I've ever had with the GP. So that's going to be interesting. Um, it's not like he needs to necessarily see what I'm doing or moving like or anything else um, so the only issue would be getting the certificate and getting a script if he's going to give me a script my GP did say that he would give me a script for pain just to be able to have on hand um, the only problem is it's got codeine in it and he doesn't want me getting addicted to it and I said neither do I so um, that wouldn't be ideal. What the heck were you um, putting you down there? Um, so yeah, he's very much kind of, I think he knows that I'm not going to take pain meds if I don't need them. And because the lower back, I'm not in constant pain with that. I do have to be careful when I get up, but I'm, um, I'm moving through whatever the pain might be. And my physio said, no, you can move the issue is that it's grabbing because it thinks it's about to do something that's going to put it in a world of hurt so therefore it's uh, spasming and it's those kind of spasms that I'm trying to avoid um, but it's not causing any damage although it feels like it is and I yelped when I went to move yesterday on the couch I went to slide forward and it was like yeah, yeah. so that's not fun but um, I know that that will fix and it's been sore before and it's been fixed before and it just needs a little bit of time and it needs me to keep moving gently and all of that kind of thing and it needs me not sleeping on my back so my husband's pretty good at getting me to stay on my side um, because he doesn't seem to sleep um, so he's at least awake to be able to kind of stay, you know, roll over um, and that and it helped when we first met and I know it will help again so that's the aim with the lower back the upper back yeah I am 
I'm going to see how I am after the four days off and I'll talk to my GP on Tuesday morning and if the four days actually helps some of my problem is that I get my roster uh, the roster is now done until the end of April which means that I know exactly what I'm doing to um, drop my colleagues in the poo so to speak and I don't like going on Ooh, pet updates not mine well no not mine um pet updates I've been watching um Crashly's Nola had a kitten I think I haven't confirmed if it was only one kitten but Nola had um a kitten and Elizabeth and Edward have a baby baby English Mastiff he's huge he's six weeks old and his paws are ginormous and he is the cutest thing and I watched her video um, doing the road trip through the Virginia mountains um, loved that loved watching the um, the whole thing the uh, sorry the Blue Ridge Mountains because I, uh, I was thinking of the song Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia and um, when I was watching the video and she was saying oh you know we're driving through here um, so yeah absolutely loved watching the videos and have loved seeing the updates of um, their new baby he's huge so yeah it'd be really really interesting watching him growing up um but he's gorgeous he's you know english he's the the typical color of it so he's tan and he's got the dark kind of points and and things like that but oh he's beautiful um what else i saw stone cold coffee crafts put a photo of her cat nelly who we never see on camera because lola is the camera hog so nelly we got to see she's a beautiful rag doll um so please go and check them out if you would like to follow them go and see who my who i follow on instagram so you click on my name and you should then be able to click on followers or following and you should be able to see who I'm following and you can see the girls showing their pets. Um, so yeah, Elizabeth Inslee, Crashly and Stone Cold Coffee Crafts, Hike It. Ooh, that was that one. That's right. i to make sure I'm on the right colour. Um, yes, but all the all the pet updates it was like pet porn this week it was awesome um oh, there was something funny i watched i think it was you know facebook memes made me laugh out loud um like seriously funny um oh, this morning we were watching some dude on facebook he was a hunter and he was sitting there with his crossbow in his camouflage now i don't know if this is for real because these were domesticated turkeys to be doing this but the turkey came up to him one of the girls and she perched on his um not a slingshot crossbow and then another white turkey came and um also sat up on his other arm so he was petting this turkey in his camouflage gear shaking his head at the camera while this turkey is cuddling up to him like a cat it was so funny um but yeah whether or not it's for real or he was you know out in the backyard as people are getting very very creative with um their quarantines and self-isolations at the moment whether he was genuinely going to shoot turkeys and he was recording this i don't know but it was funny um a couple of other things if you want to have a bit of a laugh um i'm not going to get the link for this because i'm not part of the group yet i think somebody else is part of the group so i can see the posts i think it's called bin isolation and it's people dressing up putting the bins out um there have been transformers and there have been superheroes and there have been cartoons and there have been um remote controls and yeah it's um 
it's quite funny and somebody actually said that they wanted to move to Australia because you guys are fucking awesome um, yeah Australians are not going to take something like that too seriously and they're going to go all out and be daft and um, I think it's pretty cool it's bin day for us today so I've got to get the bins out um, but yeah if you want some funnies there's certainly some funnies out there you don't need to be um, too stuck in a rut all right um look I'm not sure where I have um, left off as I said in the beginning there was a bit of a glitch with the um, audio visual and the recording it just stopped even though it showed me still stop still recording which was a bit of a shame because at the very end Sophie actually jumped up into my lap and she wouldn't say goodbye but she did give um, a Flopsy goodbye. Flopsy is her bunny and this morning, this is the next day from yesterday's recording, um, Flopsy has been put into the washing machine and given a wash so um, she was a bit upset when she saw, oh, she saw him on the line. I've just gone and put a line in where I shouldn't have done. So I'm doing black work if I haven't got visuals working just so you know what I'm doing and now I'm having to frog it because I've put a line in the middle of a box it's like oops anyway um so yeah look I was talking um at some point about um newbies um and how Mrs. Coffee gave a challenge in her live last weekend for new people and what I would suggest a new person is on videos would be somebody with maybe less than 100 subscribers, maybe less than 200 subscribers. It really depends. If you've been putting out content pretty regularly, you're probably okay. But if you're not, and all you've been doing is maybe unboxings, you haven't had the chance to do a whip and chat, um, the challenge was for new people to do a whip and chat, right? Newbies to do... Um, I think it was a half hour and seasoned YouTubers to do an hour. Mrs. Coffee is then going to take all your links that you send her and she is going to put them into a playlist so that you get a bit more coverage and basically you get more viewers. Um, that's the intent behind it. Mrs. Coffee does this uh, once every two, three months maybe. Um, she has been an awesome champion as she has said repeatedly she built her channel herself um, and I wasn't here in the very beginning I think I started watching Mrs. Coffee when she was maybe around about the thousand subscriber mark um, give or take a couple both herself and Rachel were around about the thousand subscriber mark when I came along so um, I have been with her ever since and um, yeah, she has put the work in, she has put the videos in and that is key. A lot of people seem to have this impression that you make it when you're live and because that's where you see the big YouTubers live. Um, you don't make it live. If all you do is lives, you're not going to get your subscribers. Um, because people must be available or they must watch your replays and as Mrs. Coffee said and as I completely endorse watching a live back where everyone's just going hi 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 is boring as batshit so Mrs. Coffee's live as you will know she will do a hello she will do a run through the list say hi and then she'll get on and she'll start talking and that's the beauty of being able to watch something like hers on a replay it's um it it flows it's more it's a conversation but it's not lots of highs or lots of stalls it's lots of stories and that should be i think what you aim for your viewers want to get to know you um and i guess my tips would be um you didn't start youtube having never watched YouTube before, did you? No? So, if you want to do a YouTube channel, 
it's because you've seen what other people are doing and because you've either liked or hated what they do and think I can do better or I want to share me with others. You've got a reason why you've started your channel. You've got a partner maybe supporting you like I do. You've got um, something that you want to talk about. You've got tutorials that you want to share. You have a skill that you particularly like or you just want to get on and rant um, and tell the world whatever it is that's on your mind. Okay, but you started it for a reason. Or you're thinking of starting it for a reason. I was watching unboxings and my husband encouraged me to start my channel and said, no, I think you've got something to offer. And I'm kind of going, you see, you really? You, okay. Um, I mean, yes, I kind of, I felt like, yes, I did have something to offer. Um, but there's still that element of who the hell's going to want to watch me um, that's out there. So my encouragement would be on your very first couple of videos, get a index card, an index card even, uh, have an index card or a piece of paper and write down bullet points to keep you on track. So you might have your bullet points of conversation points that you want to talk about. So you might want to talk about the weather, you might want to talk about your job, you might want to talk about the projects that you're doing. The problem being that when you get going, you might get sidetracked. You might start talking about colors and then you get onto shapes and you're kind of going, oh, hang on, I needed to talk about containers or something. If you've got those bullet points written down, it means that you've got something to go back to. And if you go off topic on your bullets, it's fine, absolutely fine. But your bullets will bring you back if you kind of go, Oh, I've talked that topic to exhaustion. What am I going to talk about next? Um, so just in the early days, this isn't necessarily something that you need to keep doing. You might want to kind of have a think about that one, but you, you may kind of think, oh, I, today I'm talking about storage. So you might want to keep on topic for that. Um, but if it's just a rambling kind of chat and it's, you know, stories about life and and things like that you may or may not want to touch on certain things you may want to have taboo t topics that you don't talk about um that come up so um bullet points i think are quite key crucial to keep you on point um in the early days um when you start i think it's beneficial to Talk to one person. Uh, when you get used to talking in a room on your own, um, it's not so bad. But initially you will kind of feel a bit strange talking to the air and dead air at that because we don't have an audience. Um, so I actually do a lot of my whipping chats and my husband is usually tripping around or he's in the kitchen or something so he might actually interject a couple of times now, I don't know if the camera picks that up fully so be aware of that um, one thing I will say and I can hear things like my computer fan going tropo down below me here I don't think it comes across on video we often get people commenting oh excuse the dishwasher it's pinging it's annoying or whatever you actually don't hear a lot of the background everyday sounds. I do hear um, what we call the beast in the kitchen. The beast is um, a blender thing that we use. It's huge. It's got a big heavy engine on this thing. Um, you do hear that in the background, but ordinarily you don't actually hear the life sounds in the background. So listen back to your videos when there is noises happening. Be conscious of the level of TV if you talk to backing music, have it so that the backing music doesn't overwhelm your speaking volume. Um, if you're doing unboxings, uh, this was a tip I think somebody else had said, Rachel had said it. I haven't actually seen the video where she says it, but it makes perfect sense. If you're doing an unboxing and you've got the crackly bit, shut up. Don't talk over the crackle bits. Um, I put a warning up visually um, saying crackle alert. Mrs. Coffee gives a little d 
disclaimer -y thing that she says every time. It's the same thing that she says every time. Um, Sherry does a similar thing. You know, wait until the crackling stops um, or you see her start, stop fighting with the bag and, um, you know, mute your volume for 30 seconds. So there's a little bit of a heads up that there's going to be a big noise burst. I actually like the crackle. Um, and I think as most people have said, when they get to doing your own unboxings, as in opening your diamond paintings, um, you actually get to like that crackle. I know, it's it's strange. It's one of those trigger noises that we're probably all going to have PTSD from. <laughs> um, you know, the, the crackle, it's kind of like, oh, it's, a, it's a diamond art club, you know, or whatever it is. Um, yeah, so have fun with it too. Um, think about your editing, Thinking, think about your intros and your outros if you want them. Um, Rachel has paid for hers uh, to give that cherry blossom start, which is quite professional looking. Um, I have one that I have downloaded free music from the YouTube audio library. Go check that out. Um, if you're thinking of making videos you really 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 should be working from YouTube studio um, which is studio.youtube.com um, that is your uh, video editing suite it's your database it's where you put in your end screens where you put in your eyes for the cards in the middle of your videos um, and it's where you see comments it's where you see um, any other tips and tricks that YouTube wants to give you so check out studio.youtube.com there is a creator's YouTube that is invaluable to anyone who want to up their game on YouTube. Um, so there's a, but there's an audio library link in studio that you can follow and you can get access to all the music um, that is Creative Commons or you need to give um, a little credit due where um, the Composer has asked for credit and you stick it in the bottom of your description. Um, Mrs. Coffey, I think, I'm not sure if she still does it. I haven't paid attention, to be honest. I hit play and sometimes just get back into whatever I'm doing. Um, she puts Ben Sound, I think, in her ticker tape, you know, that scrolls through in the intro. Uh, you don't have to put it in there, but you, do, you should put it into your description. Um, to give credit where credit is due. So there is the audio library on YouTube and there is Ben Sounds and there are other audio libraries as well. Epidemic Sounds you need to pay for. Um, if you ever watch uh, Peter McKinnon, he uses Epidemic Sounds and the sounds there are absolutely unreal. Uh, but you do need to pay 10, 15 dollars a month. So if you're interested in music, go somewhere like there. If you're not um, overly keen on that, there are as I say, the um, the clips, audio clips on um, YouTube, you can select them for different lengths of time. Um, intros, you can get Intro Maker on Android and iPhone. Um, you can use uh, iMovie on iPhones um, to make them. And uh, what is it? That's a real oh, gosh. Is it Render Forest? Um, there is a really fancy one that does some of the really, really fancy movie kind of things. I haven't figured that one out. Um, uh, Ashley has used that, though, in her introductions. Um, I did try having a look, but I couldn't quite figure out, and I just lost interest. So, there is a lot of resources out there, so um, please don't be afraid. Now, if you are a new YouTuber, I do ask that you already have created at least one video on your channel. Um, I have got a YouTube creators only lounge. It's not just for diamond painting, it is for all crafts. Um, so if you're um, interested in that, you're looking for support, you're looking for people to share their webcams, their microphones, their setups, whatever it is you're after as tech support, as creator friends, as whatever, um, please come and join that group. Uh, the link is in the description. Um, the other thing that is in the studio at YouTube, if you haven't already figured this out, your description needs to be either written out every single time, which is a bit of a drag, 
or you can set it up as a default description. So I set a default description and up until the line that says, please give constructive criticism or constructive advice rather than criticism kind of thing, that's all, everything after that is by default. Um, so some of them may not be relevant. I need to keep going back and checking it. But anything above those dotted lines is new. And there are the links for the particular video or whatever. So um, if you're checking out um, anyone's videos, there's a little triangle that drops down the description or show more if you're on your computer. And you can read all through the description. There are going to be many links in those descriptions that all the YouTubers generally put in at some point with links to what they're doing and links to who they follow or links to whatever it is that they're showcasing and stop asking your damn questions without reading please because it can get a bit old um we don't set you up to fail uh we do give you links and we do share things with you um it's not a big secret so Sometimes the descriptions aren't there. I know there has been YouTube glitches. I have gone on to Stitcheristas and I'm kind of going, there's no description. I just need to reload the page and it's there. It's really weird. Um, and I know YouTube was going through a hinky thing where either videos take forever to upload or um, the uh, lives aren't showing correctly, that kind of thing. So. Um, be patient there is an awful lot of traffic at this time with more people at home on the internet um, so yeah just hang in there but if you want to get your viewers up you need consistent content you will see from all of your beloveds that they are regular posters they have regular content and they may even have themed days so um, They'll have a regular whip and chat on particular days. They'll have maybe certain unboxings on particular days. They will have everything repetitive. So you can kind of go, oh, it's Tuesday. Let's go jump on to Sherry's Let's Talk Tuesday. Those kind of things. So um, you're going to have your favorites. Figure out what it is that you love about your favorites that not to copy them you're not a clone you want to bring your own flavor if you've got your own channel you've got to bring you to the internet um, so figure out what it is that you have that you want people to see you know um, if it's not diamond painting maybe don't put diamond painting in your title think about the name for your YouTube channel uh, think about you might start with diamond painting, but if you have other crafts that you also do, so you might like to do coloring, you might like to do um, cross stitch, you might like to do crochet, you might like to do knitting. If all of those crafts are something that you want to incorporate, think of your branding. Think of what it is you might want to show. And if it's not only diamond painting, then don't put your name necessarily as diamond painting diva or whoever um it could be you know crafty critter or you know just think about the name take a bit of time thinking about the name google will not let you keep changing the name um ad infinitum it, you know there is a period that it will lock you out and you're stuck with that name for a bit um so before you start kind of going, oh, I'm going to play with this and see how it goes down. Actually have a think about it. Ask friends if you're not sure. If you're in the YouTube channel, in the, sorry, in the YouTube creator group, ask the group for some suggestions. Brainstorming is a great way to do this. Um, Terry in Queensland came up with um, Koala Crafts after brainstorming with both myself and Donnie and I don't know if she asked anyone else as well but um, she did some brainstorming and she came up with her name that kind of encompasses everything that she wants to do so don't lock yourself in if you don't want to be locked in um, yeah um, 
think about your lighting, think about when you've got available to film, think about what comes on your camera, uh, do some test runs um, before you put some lives up, do some videos maybe and don't put them as public, um, put them as unscheduled and um, ask a few trusted people to give you advice on how that video went and they will give you advice they will tell you your lighting was great your lighting was sucked your microphone was muffly whatever it might be that will help you um, you don't need fancy equipment okay I've got some cameras but then I've got a techie husband so I've got cameras lying around um, I didn't have a microphone initially I was using the microphone in a PlayStation webcam um, People use their phones all the time. Rachel and Mrs. Coffee were using their phones up until very recently. I think Mrs. Coffee, I'm not sure. She might use it for some of her videos. Um, you know, we're not all using um, great big fancy cameras. So don't think that because you don't have a great big fancy camera, you can't do this. You can. Uh, you might not be able to go live from your phone. Well, you can't under a thousand subscribers. But again, I don't think going live should necessarily be your goal. Um, if you want to go live, I don't know, try Twitch. I haven't tried Twitch. I'm not interested. Um, I don't have a static enough environment for me to be able to go live. Um, it takes a bit of organising for me to say to my husband, I'm going live and I need quiet in the background. I can't edit it out. Um, I need to know that Sophie's in bed. I need to know that jobs are done and I'm free to be able to do that. That's partly why I don't go live. Um, and that's, you know, just how it is. So when I do go live infrequently, um, it, it's very much planned. Uh, what else? Have fun. Have fun. If this is your hobby, and you want to share it with your friends because, you know, hey, we're, you know, supposed to be social distancing currently. All these new trendy words for home alone. Um, yeah. Um, you know, connect with people. But have fun. You need to be having fun. If you're not having fun, then your viewers are probably not going to be having fun. Uh, if you get to a point where you're kind of going to yourself, what am I going to talk about? Oh, and then you've got your brain stalls and your brain is kind of going, I don't know what to talk about. And you're actually verbalizing that. That doesn't make for good viewing. And that's where the cue cards and things work. Um, the get to know me questions are awesome. Um, you've heard a few of those in my recent whip and chats. Uh, the, um, how did I get into this craft questions are awesome. Uh, whether it's diamond painting or any other craft that you do. And people usually want to hear how you got into what you're doing, especially if it's something a bit unusual. Um, there's tutorials out there if you're into teaching, you might be a teacher. You might kind of think, oh, I do this a bit differently from everyone else. Maybe I should show my technique. Uh, that kind of thing is is really, really good. Um, I'm doing my head in. I keep on hearing me say, eh, and um, and it, it's driving me scatty. It's probably driving you scatty too. I know I do it a lot. It's because I'm thinking on the go. And I haven't... Uh, allowed the pauses in between, so I verbalised the pause, if that makes sense. And I've always done it, so I don't know that I'm actually going to be able to stop it. I still do it at work. I read aloud at work constantly. That's a little bit easier because it's reading, but it's a bit more structured. And I'm usually reading it for the very first time too, so I'm trying to read it and get the flow, but then a lot of it is slightly repetitious to a certain extent, you know, same story, different day kind of thing. All right, um, look, I think we're probably up to a decent time. I've, oops, lost my string. I will let you go. Uh, videos, 
I have playlists. Create your playlists. If you're starting out and you've got two videos that are kind of alike, create playlists. I think they are helpful. It means people can go and jump into your playlists and then watch you back to back. And you know what? If they like you, they'll keep coming back. Um, subscribers are awesome like that. Uh, there are certain marketing strategies you can do. Um, I have watched them with Sherry. You know, if you're watching this far, put in a ladybird, those kind of things. It lets her know what the viewers are watching. Um, they, they are, you know, clever little marketing strategies. And she is a businesswoman, whether she wants to admit it or not. It's just that she's out of practice. Um, she is very much a strategic um, YouTuber or she's a, quite a strategic person in her planning. And... Um, there are methods to her madness. So have a think about some of those techniques. Uh, you may or may not want to use them. You may or may not want to um, use them sporadically because you actually want to know who's watching at certain points. Um, some people will watch for the duration and they've learned that the gold is often at the end of the video rather than at the beginning of the video. Uh, I know this is very much true for Rachel. Um, you don't... It, it, and you can scan through. This is the other thing. You, you don't have to play it on, um, for, on one speed. You can speed it up to 1.5 for most people. 2 for some who are quite slow in their speech. And um, if you can keep up. You can train your ear to actually listen if you want to hear the stories. If it doesn't really bother you and you just want time and you just want somebody keeping you company, then just play it at normal speed. But if there's lots of gaps and and that kind of thing, you might just kind of think, oh, I'm switching off. So, yeah, fiddle with the speed. It's in the settings. If you find somebody that's that little bit kind of plodding or stuff, there are tips and tricks on YouTube that you can use. Um, to get the best out of your viewers, get the best out of your time, or get get the best out of your videos, and get the best out of your time. So, I've finished this string. I'm going to keep going because I'm um, finished all my boxes, and that means I've got to wait until Wednesday for my next box from Claire on the peppermint purple stitch long. Um, so I'm going to finish all my boxes and I'm going to figure out which border I'm actually doing and then I am going to kick my butt and get started on my cunning cross stitch because that's the next plan. So I will get this video uploading, edited and let you go. All right, look, um, I hope the video has made sense to you. Um, it's quite a long one, so I'm not sure how much editing I'm, or listening back I'm going to be able to do. Hopefully, if I have thought about it, I have put links in I may not have done on this one. So if there's something in particular that I've mentioned, please let me know and I will give you the links. Or Well, I'll actually put those links into the description as well, but I'll make sure that I'm, I'm up to speed. Um, YouTubers that I have referenced have been Rachel Ray, Crafters Anonymous with Mrs. Crochet and Coffee, um, My Diamond Art Addiction, um, I can't think who else at this stage. Um, I think I might have referenced Stone Cold Coffee Crafts earlier as well. Uh, so go and check those out. They are the channel names. I'm not going to put the links in the description. Go and do your own homework. Um, I will see you next week um, for another whip and chat. There's actually a floss tube coming up, uh, my second one. I'm very new to that. I did a bit of a stitching with the floss tube. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if there's a protocol. I'm, I'm not sure I care. Um, if you have enjoyed the video, click like, click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Hello, if you are, um, or if you're new, um, welcome to my madhouse. And um, join the ride. Uh, there are now over 20 whip and chats that you can jump in on. Some are shorter, some are longer. There are playlists galore. Please go check them out. If you have little kids, there is the story time read along. And I read with Sophie. 
um, some kid stories that we got from Big W when they were giving away free books. So look, there's, there's something pretty much for everyone and I hope you enjoy my channel. Thank you for joining me. Um, I love sharing the little bit of life that I do share. Um, I do love that and I certainly love your comments and really appreciate everything that um, you guys do for me. Um, I'm still quite in awe that I'm at the level that I'm at with all of this and feel like very much a rookie um, even though I have shared tips, tricks and everything else with other people. So um, yeah, I do this for you and for me. So um, I hope you get something out of it and uh, enjoy it as we go along. All right. Um, thank you. I'll see you. I was just trying to wrap this video up. Um, thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe, do all the usual things, and I will see you around on the tubes. Bye for now.